Now we're going to look at one way of capturing a 3D scan of yourself. The first step would be to go to em3dscanningapp.com and download this app to your iPhone. You'll need one of the newer iPhones that has the um, face recognition scanning ability uh, to unlock your phone. So this is what the app looks like. Open the app on your phone and click the scan button at the bottom. Then click the circle at the bottom to begin recording. Rotate the camera around your head, trying to keep your head centered as much as possible in the screen. Uh, make sure that you tilt the camera up to get the, the top of your head and the bottom under your chin and around your nose. If you get an error message, don't worry about it. You can always do another scan. Um, but in this case, I'm going to rotate the scan around. You can see that I missed a big piece on the top of the head, so I want to redo it anyway. And I also noticed that my sweater is causing a problem, so I'm probably going to take that off um, so that I have less interference. And I'll try another scan. I'll delete that one and start again. Again, trying to keep the head in the center of the screen as much as possible. Oh, another error, lost tracking, so I'm going to delete that one. That's not good at all. I'll try once again. Need to be patient. The more you go through this process, the better you'll get at it. Um, you'll start to develop a sense of, you know, what works and what doesn't. Trying to get multiple angles underneath the chin, so that's not a giant hole or misshapen area. The top of the head, really trying to make sure I don't get that V cut out again up there. And under the nose can be tricky. Uh, you want to make sure that you get a nice rounded end to the tip of your nose and moving the scanner at different angles is what's going to uh, smooth out that mesh and give you a better final result. As long as the, the phone doesn't lose tracking you can keep going with the scan pretty much as long as you like. Okay, so I stop that, let the, with the phone process the image. And before you save it or discard it, rotate it around and take a look. Make sure you've got all of the main features that you want. There are no big holes. There's a lot of extra material there, but that's fine. We'll delete that in a, in a later step. So I click Save, and now tap on the image, Actions, and Rename the file. Yes, tap Rename, and then tap Actions, and Export STL. And I'm going to export it to my Mac. Now, the first time you share an STL, uh, you'll need to unlock that feature. Um, so you'll you know, need to pay for it. Um, but then after that, it will be available to export as many um, files as you like.
the scanner will not pick up glasses very well so you'll want to do your scan without glasses and also if you have you know hair that falls in the front of your face uh, you'll want to pull it back behind your ears um, and not have earrings on or anything like that uh, because the scanner will um, not be able to pick up that degree of detail. This is the file that we just exported from EM3D. And you can see that it's not a solid STL file like we're used to seeing. It's kind of just a shell, the outer mesh of what we scanned. Um, and also that there's a lot of extra stuff there that we're going to want to cut away. So we've got a number of things we need to do to this file before we can use it in creating 3D printable models. We need to clean it up, get rid of any extra material, and we need to make it into a solid. And we also need to reduce the file size. You notice down below it's 55.2 megabytes, which is more than twice uh, the maximum size that Tinkercad will allow. So we need to reduce the file size as well. To clean up our scan and to reduce the file size, um, we're going to use a free software program called MeshLab. And you can download it from MeshLab.net. In MeshLab, we'll click the folder icon to import mesh and we'll choose the file that we exported from EM3D. Click open, okay. And we can use these rings to rotate our image. Take a look at it. Okay. To cut away the excess pieces that we don't want, we're going to use two of these icons up in the toolbar up here. And if you hover your mouse over the icons, a little tooltip will pop up telling you what it is. So we're going to use select vertices, and then we're going to use this triangle with the X, which is delete vertices. All right, so I'll choose select vertices. The selection tool is a rectangle, so you need to keep that in mind and position your model in such a way that you can capture all of the material that you want to get rid of. Once it's selected, then I click delete vertices and it got rid of all that. Now, keeping in mind that I have a rectangular selection tool, again, I'm orienting my model in such a way that I can cut away just the material that I want to cut away without cutting away the model, the part that I want to keep. Um, and I'll caution you, too, that take your time doing this. Um, because there's no undo feature capability in MeshLab. So if you mess up, you'll have to start over. So if that makes you nervous, you can choose File, Export Mesh as an STL, and you know, so that you're saving various um, steps along the way so you don't have to start everything from scratch if you mess up sort of toward the end. Um, select vertices, again, try to get as much material as I can. Okay, that's not looking bad. The ear on that side is okay. The ear on the other side is, I've got a big lump there. I could fix that in a, in a program afterwards, but I'm just going to... delete the whole sort of back part of the head so that I have just my face. 
So. like. Alright, I'll try laying this down. I'm trying to position it in such a way that I can get a straight line cut right across there to get rid of that last bit of material. So let's see how this works. Okay, I think that's all right. Delete. Okay, so I've got just my my face now. Uh, if I zoom in and I click on the mesh icon or the wireframe icon, we can see the complexity of the mesh. So scanners create very complex meshes, much more complex than we need for 3D printing, again, because our 3D printers are not going to uh, be able to handle this fine resolution anyway, and it just makes the file size unnecessarily large. So we can reduce the file size by choosing filters, remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction. And then going down to simplification, quadratic edge collapse decimation. And we'll do it as a percentage. We'll cut the size in half and apply. And you might have noticed that the triangles got larger there. So we reduced the number by 50%, um, but we, you know the shape didn't change. It's still essentially uh, the same shape. So that's good. Now we can choose File, Export Mesh As, and to distinguish the two files. I'll call this one ML for Mesh Lab. Uh, make sure that you choose the proper file type at the bottom. So we want the STL file format and then save and OK. Now if I flip over to my downloads, here's the ML file and you can see I have just the face. The file size now is a paltry 837 kilobytes, so much, much smaller than this 55.2 megabytes. So we can go to Tinkercad, click Create a New Design, click Import, choose File, choose the file that we cleaned up and reduced, Upload. Now it says the height is 254 millimeters. Um, that's pretty big, so I'm just going to say 100 and import. It's still a relatively large file, so it takes time. So you, you'll notice here that there are some errors, right, because we didn't make the model solid. We just did some cleaning up. So there's a trick that you can do with flash print. You may have noticed when you import models sometimes to flash print, it'll ask you if you want flash print to repair the models for you, which is a nifty feature to have. So if I choose my Mesh Lab model, do I want to display it on the platform? Yes. And now it's asking me to repair the model. And I'll say, yes, the model has been repaired. And look at that, it's solid. Uh, it's not quite completely smooth on the back, almost, um, but pretty, pretty good. Um, now, 
It's also still way too big. This is the original size, right? Life size. So I'm going to scale it down. Now I want to rotate it. so that it's flat on the print bed. Grab that ring. Oh, somehow I got off the bed. So let's just move on platform center. OK, that looks roughly flat. Uh, and now I'm going to choose cut and a horizontal cut. I'm going to drag this down so that I'm cutting off enough of that bottom so that I've got a perfectly flat surface there. Um, click Start Cut. And then I can click the piece that I cut off and delete it. Just click on the remaining piece, move on platform center. And now if I rotate my screen, you can see I've got a nice solid blue piece there. And finally, I can choose File, Save As. And I will leave that as it is. I'm going to make sure to choose STL and to really make sure that that's what it saves as, I'm actually going to add .stl to the file name and choose Save. So now when I go back to Tinkercad, and I'll delete this one, choose Import, choose File, a cut version, upload, Import. All right, so there is my file. Now I can use it as, as any other shape. So I can combine it with, uh, you know, any any shape that I want. So if this is 62, if I raise this 62 millimeters. center it, center. Right, I can select everything and group. And there you go. So now I have you know, a single model. Obviously, you don't necessarily want to put your face on a cube, but uh, you could put it on a robot or an action figure uh, or a Pez dispenser or any other uh, thing that you can come up with.